In this video, I will cover where to find some of the settings for Thea Render within Cinema 4D and give some tips on how to use Thea Render for Cinema 4D. Before watching this video, it's probably helpful if we go to the Live Plugins page, Thea for Cinema 4D, and scroll down, watch the Getting Started video right here. This will tell us how to install the plugin. We can also download the plugin. The next thing we can do if we're not familiar with Thea Render yet is to go to the Resources page, go down to Tutorials, Overview, and watch 5 through 13 here. Under the Resources here, there's also some good libraries for a lot of different textures to be used with Thea Render. Next, let's switch over to Cinema 4D. I have the plugin installed already, as can be seen by going to Plugins, it's already installed. With that, the next thing that should be done is to go here, click on Devices. Set up the different devices. With Presto in the render, the power of your graphics card and CPU can be used at the very same time to render as fast as possible, which is why this is really important, and also why we need to choose which device is going to be used for the interactive render, because either the CPU or the GPU can be used for the interactive render when using Presto. For me, I have set the CPU to lowest priority because that helps me to record this video. And here is the version I'm using. The Thea for Cinema 40 plugin is just out of alpha. So this is a very early edition of the plugin. But a lot of stuff is working here. So to begin with, I have a very simple scene, light disk cube, and to get this rendering, all I have to do is click on Render Settings and switch it from Standard to The Render. That's all I have to do. Click Render. And it's rendering. But to get this looking better, I can go to Darkroom, click on Interactive Render, and here I can adjust how bright it is by changing the shutter speed, ISO, all the same settings that we would have within Theta Studio. There's also interactive engine controls here and interactive resolutions. With this on interactive, I can change the perspective here and it will update very soon after. This is also really good for looking at a bunch of different materials really fast. But I'm not quite satisfied with the quality I'm getting, so I can go to the render settings. I want more depth to it. So I can go to IR, up the diffusion depth, up the glossy depth. Now I'll be getting more reflections and refractions happening in the interactive render. I can also switch this to using Presto by going here to the render settings and switching this to Presto. And before I do this, I'm going to go to advanced, switch this to lower, and to only use the GPU so it can come through right with the video recording that I'm doing right now. And I'll switch it to Presto now. And as it can be seen, it's really rendering fast now, and this isn't even the full resolution it's rendering at. It's rendering at that resolution. It's a pretty high resolution that it's rendering at interactively. Uh, if we rotate this, we can see BAM, just about real-time rendering there, using Presto and a single GTX 480. So I'll stop that and go through how to make material for the render through Cinema 4D. We could make a Cinema 4D material, apply it, 
and then use the plugin to convert the material. But if we're making a scene from scratch, we might as well use the theme material. So we can go create, shader, theme material. And I like changing the preview to unbiased because it gives a quick preview that's very accurate to what it's going to look like when it's finally rendered. Through this, we have all the options that we would have in Thea Studio. If you're new to Thea Render, I highly recommend double clicking on the material to bring up the Thea Material Lab. Within here, we have access to all the materials that were installed or added through Thea Studio. In this case, I have installed the tiles, so I'll just add that. The reason I recommend using this interface if you haven't used Thea a lot is because it really shows here in this picture what kind of layering system that it's going to use. Thea render material layering system is quite a bit different than in Cinema 40. It's quite easy to see what's happening. Let's say we add a coating. We can see there's a coating right on top of the basic material, but there's other things that can happen, like having two basic materials side by side. Each one will be given 50%, or we can put one on top of the other. Then we can put a alpha map here in the texture to have only top, some of the top material show and then the rest of the material will be the bottom material showing through the top material. So at this point I think I will go with this material which I've made previously. I click exit and it automatically gets all the settings imported and the picture into this material. I can now apply this to disk I'll make another material, the material. I'll apply this to the cube. And now I'll show another really great feature of the Thea to Cinema 40 plugin, which is that the interactive render region right here does work. Which I really like because here we can select objects and move them around. I can change my flay radius and all this. It's, it's absolutely amazing that this kind of a thing is working. Next thing I'm going to show off is how good this is at making caustics. So I'll click on this material, general, preview, change the room to unbiased, go to basic here. I'm going to use a glossy material because glossy is used for metals which we can access by changing the reflectance color and stuff but we can also use an IOR file so in this case I'm going to use in this case I'm going to pick AU which is for gold and there it is gold texture very easily made But here I want to show off the transparency, so I'll turn on transmittance and reflectance. And just like that, we have this glossy material that's giving us some pretty good caustics here. Now, if we're not getting enough transparency depth, click on render settings, go to IR and the tracing depth can be up right here. So I'll up that to 12. Now it can be seen we're getting a lot more detail here within the transparent object. And we're getting some better caustic showing up. But we're not restricted to using area lights either. If I want I can go to the light here switch this to infinite light, make the shadow area so it looks better, and all of a sudden it looks really really bright 
but we don't have to click on the dark room again to change these settings. We can also click on camera, add a Thea camera tag to this, switch to the camera view, override, and now change the settings right here. So I'll up this. And there we are. Now we're getting the sun within Thea Render. The angle can be changed right here. Since I have a target tag on this, I can adjust the sun's angle by moving the light. And we can change the angle here. And through the camera tag, maybe add some glare. Let's do radial. And to really see this better, I'm going to click on the full render. This way we can really see the glare effect and how fast this is rendering. This is basically done rendering. Less than 12 seconds. We get this awesome glare coming off the sun. It just looks amazing. Just imagine with this camera tag animating the glare changing as you go from an indoor situation to an outdoor situation. The last thing I want to show here is that the plugin actually does work with procedurals too. So I'll quickly add a Thea material. I'm going to do surfaces. Let's do galaxy. There's the galaxy swirl. I'm going to add this straight to the disk. Normally this is crazy because you go, oh, that's absolutely not going to work. But with the plugin, because it's been made so well, yes, the procedurals do work. We haven't even converted it to a theme material yet. But I do recommend converting it to a theme material for more control and quicker renders so it doesn't have to sit there and convert the Cinema 4D material to the theme material. If we zoom in really, really far, we could start seeing some pixels. For this situation, we can put a Thea Bake Texture tag and increase the resolution of this texture to whatever we want so it bakes out the procedural texture correctly.